Good afternoon. My name is Renee Hoganson, and I'm running for U.S. House of Representatives to represent Missouri's 4th Congressional District in Washington, D.C. Can everyone hear me okay? I want to say thank you so much for coming out this afternoon. I want to thank my team for putting all of this together on very short notice. We just, we just announced this hours ago. Um, our, our, um, the, the, the events of the last 24 hours, in my mind, have, have caused a, an urgent need for as much statement and as much fight as we can possibly muster. And I really appreciate being here today in front of the memorial of people who have fought and died for the freedom of this country. And I know some of you in the audience today are also veterans of our, of our uh, foreign wars and, and, and our military. So thank you for your service. Yesterday, the President of the United States stood on foreign soil next to one of our greatest adversaries and denounced American agencies and processes. He blamed America for tensions with a brutal dictator and, for, and former KGB agent who is merciless on the world stage. He has repeatedly said that he has Putin's word that Putin did not interfere with our elections. He acts as if, as if this should be enough for the American people despite all contrary evidence. Congressman from both parties have denounced this, but not our representative from Missouri's 4th Congressional. Representative Hartzler has said she is concerned about Russians' interference, but she stopped short of denouncing the president for siding with Russia over America. I ask you, Representative Hartzler, whose side are you on? Are you on Team America or Team Putin? Because the leader of the free world has sided with President Putin, a murderer who has continued to undermine the American way. Trump's own appointee as Director of National Intelligence, Daniel Coates, maintained that the findings of all American agencies that the Russians have indeed interfered with our election. He said, we have, a clear, we have been clear in our assessments of Russian meddling in the 2016 election and their ongoing pervasive efforts to undermine our democracy, and we will continue to provide unvarnished and objective intelligence in support of our national security. Outside Missouri, prominent politicians on both sides of the aisle have criticized alignment with Putin. This is a nonpartisan issue. Senators and congressmen from both parties have denounced the president's comments, including Senator Bob Corker, Jeff Flake, John McCain, Senator Susan Collins, Lindsey Graham, Grassley, Rob Portman, Tim Scott, Patrick Toomey, Jerry Morin of Kansas, Representative Ed Royce of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Committee, Robert Goodlate of the Judiciary Committee, Representative Sherry Bustos, Chairwoman Kathy McMorris Rogers, Senator Deb Fisher, our own Senator McCaskill, and even Roy Blunt. Here is what Speaker Paul Ryan said. The president must appreciate that Russia is not our ally. Officials in the intelligence community agree Russia continues to undermine our elections and are currently working to undermine the upcoming midterms in November. We have to take these threats as a reality. We need to take this election off the grid and go back to paper ballots. Why is Representative Hartzler isn't why isn't Representative Hartzler concerned about this ta attack on democracy? Why won't she fight for us? Representative Hartzler needs to stand up and demand to know what was discussed in the nearly two hours of private discussion. She should demand that the FBI investigation into what in Russian intelligence agency employees did or did not do to interfere with our elections until it is finished. Where are we vulnerable? Where are we open to attack? We need a strong and prepared military, but the attacks that we face from Russia at this time are much more subversive. Trump has never offered a plan to defend democracy from these cyber attacks or offered reassurance that we are being protected from this threat. And neither does Representative Hartzler. There is a lot of smoke. 
Why isn't our Congress interested in if there is a fire? We have potential Russians in the NRA. We have potential, Rus we have potential Russians helping congressmen win their elections. Why isn't our representative asking more questions? This president has started a trade war that will have devastating effects on Missouri's farming economy and beyond, and yet Hartzler remains silent about that. There is a saying, when someone tells you who they are, believe them. Putin has shown who he is repeatedly by his inhumane actions on the world stage. Donald Trump shows who he is by supporting this dictator and denouncing American agencies. Vicki Hartzler shows who she is by allowing it all to continue. I stand here at the Vietnam Memorial Wall to express my concern about Representative Hartzler's inability and unwillingness to take a stand against Donald Trump. We as a country cannot stand by and listen as the president commits what some call treason. I am not interested in Representative Hartzler's concern. I am interested in what she is going to do. What is she going to do to fight to preserve America and fight to preserve democracy? I can tell you what I would do. I would demand a censure on President Trump. I would demand that our next election take the necessary precautions to ensure that, accurate, that it's accurate as to the voice of the American people. I believe our representative needs to put this country ahead of all other considerations. Our representative needs to put principles before personalities. She might like President Trump, but it's time to do your job and censure the president over his egregious behavior. I wanna know what Representative Hartzler is going to do, not how concerned she is. I can tell you that if I am fortunate enough to become your representative, that I will always put Missourians first and Americans over every other consideration, including money, donors, and other people in power. We are in a fight over whether we can continue on as our country was framed as a dem democratic republic. Congress should not be lapdogs or party stamps of any kind. Hartzler has continued to show nothing but weak leadership. We need to know that our representatives have our best interests at heart and not their parties. This Congress should serve the people. I call on Representative Hartzler to put the people of Missouri, Missouri first or step down as our representative. Thank you. Do I think, do I think Representative Hartzler gave, gave the president a pass for his statement? I 100% do believe that Representative Hartzler gave the president a pass regarding this meeting, this summit, and his, and his support of President Putin despite every bit of evidence that this, that this person is not uh, operating in the best interests of the American people. And if you read her statement, you'll see what I'm saying. There's a lot of concern, no action, and certainly not calling out the president on any of this. Well, you know, I mean, you make a good point. I mean, you know, I would be going in as a freshman congressman. Um, one of the things that I'm doing is looking for other congressmen who are like me. I've already met with Representative Cleaver as an example. I've, I've, I've reached out and spoken to other candidates who believe as I believe. The, um, the, the situation with Representative Har Hartzler is she seems to not be strong enough to fight for Missourians. And she shows that over and over again by not denouncing President Trump. Clearly, the tariffs, they're a wonderful example. The tariffs are not good for Missouri 4. They're not good for the Missouri economy. They're going to have rippling effects from the agricultural industry all the way through Missouri's economy and beyond. And yet she says nothing. She does not denounce this at all. These tariffs are going to literally put most farmers in a negative, in the negative column for operating. And, and, and check this out. If, if our number one soybean customer, China, decides to, to create long-term contracts with Brazil, it would literally decimate the agricultural industry in Missouri, which is our number one industry. And yet she says nothing. So 
you know, I ask you, I mean, do you think that's okay as a constituent of Missouri 4? I personally do not. I can only tell you that for myself, the reason I'm going is to fight for Missourians. I don't know that I will be shielded from it, but I will certainly choose to make sure that I am operating from a position of integrity where I can come back and look at you and say, this is what I did and why. It's pure party politics with Representative Hartzler. I mean, that's one thing I have noticed across the board. If a Democrat does it, it's wrong. And if a Republican does it, it's right. And she'll spin a story about it. That's been what I've noticed consistently across the board. The tax reform is a great example. She goes out on the road. She's on this PR tour about the tax reform, talking about this $400 bonus that, that people get and how significant $400 is in the lives of Missourians. And it is. But the, but the bigger picture and the bigger story, I mean, as you mentioned, now we have a, now we have a significant deficit to programs that are important to Missourians. I mean, this gentleman over here, there was a gentleman here just a minute ago talking about he's a disabled veteran and he's, and he's quite um, not, and he's not taken care of at all in, in, his, in his life. And he's written us a blank check with his service. And yet, and yet Hartzler is, is, is selling this tax reform. I just wanna say on the record, when you look at, when you look at some of these, these companies, Walmart is our largest private employer. Hartzler talks about this $400 bonus that came to some of the Walmart employees. Now, let's, let's think about how, how much profit Walmart has. They're one of the most profitable companies in our country. Do they need this tax relief? Absolutely not. So let's talk about this. This $400 bonus is about 5% of their total tax relief. If Walmart decided to truly take this money and put it into the hands of their employees, each employee at Walmart would receive a $51,000 per year raise. Not a $400 one-time bonus, but a $51,000 raise. Now we got living wages. Now we have, now we have a company that is not, that is not um, basically receiving corporate welfare in the, in the way that their employees don't have living wages currently and are a lot of them on, on assistance. I think instead of, if we don't want, you know, and that's the other thing, representative likes to shame people for being on assistance. But if we don't want people on assistance, let's help them not need it. Let's make sure everybody working 40 hours can make a living for their family. It should be a priority. This government should serve the people and not its big donors and its, and its special interest groups and its lobbying groups. And that is a fundamental problem that we have with all the legislation coming out of this current Congress. Anyone else? Well, thank you again for coming today and I'll be hanging around afterwards if anybody wants to talk more. And nice to meet you, sir. I thank you for coming as well.